Hello everybody, it's Ashwin here from fitbigstrong.com and welcome to another episode of the Fit Big Strong podcast. This is episode 9 I believe and it's going to be a really good episode because today I'll be talking to you all about your first powerlifting meet. Wow, very cool. You decided to compete and I'll be giving you some advice as a, as a two-time national record holder. Um, I ended up winning collate nationals as a sub junior in the 74 kilo class uh for apu which is australian powerlifting union so i've got a little bit of experience i've done about four competitions um and i've also done water cuts and i've flown out and stayed at hotels and all that kind of stuff so i have enough experience to give you what you need to know and what to kind of expect under many different conditions and so Let's summarize what is it that I'm actually going to give you guys and what is it that you're going to learn from this this episode. Well, what is it that you need to bring? Kind of what to expect the day before competition, the night before, because, oh man, that's that's a fun experience, and the day of, of comp, which is really where the fun begins. All right, so quick competition checklist. So this is literally everything you possibly could need. Um, some of this isn't optional, some of it is mandatory, and we'll go over which is which, but do you have your membership card, if it's applicable, like sometimes you just need your membership number, you need your soft suit, knee sleeves, belt, short socks, and deadlift socks, you're going to need uh, squat and bench shoes and deadlift shoes, um, they can be one pair, but I deadlift in separate shoes to my squat and bench, uh, do you have wrist wraps, do you have a t-shirt, uh, and you need to confirm with your federation if it's uh, if it's acceptable as a t-shirt, talc or baby powder, food and drink, that one is necessary, ammonia salts, you know caffeine pre-workout if that if you take that kind of stuff, and then just some paracetamol or like ibuprofen or Tylenol or whatever the kind of painkillers are just in case because you never know you might just get a headache. Um, and if you're in uh, CAPO or GPC, which is an untested federation, then don't forget your testosterone and uh, your trenbolone and uh, all that good fun stuff, which I have uh, no experience with. So I can be tested. Um, I was honestly, I was trying to make a funny steroid joke, but I guess that uh, the wind stroll blew away. God damn it, that wasn't even funny. I was thinking like the wind blew away, but no. All right, I'm gonna stick to what. Uh, I'm going to go back on topic, because that was a terrible joke. All right, out of that list that I just wrote, what of that is actually necessary? You absolutely need a soft suit that's IPF approved or Federation approved. You need you need short socks and deadlift socks. You need that too distinct. Squat and bench shoes and deadlift shoes. So, you know, you can just wear Converse the whole time, but there's advantages to wearing different shoes. So if you have, like, a squat shoe... That, you, you might prefer that for squats and then the squat shoe can also give you better leverages for arching and then you don't really want to deadlift you don't want to deadlift with a heel so you're going to have a separate flat sole um you know like why why would you deadlift in why not just bring two pairs of shoes you'll be fine you definitely need a t-shirt <laughs> sorry you know you can't just show up with your nips out and just like deadlift like four plates um and food and drink you'd be crazy if you didn't bring this yes someone will give you water there's probably going to be a food van there, but you don't want to risk it because, like, what if it's, like, tacos and then, like, your stomach's just messed up? So bring your own food, bring your own drink. All right. Now it's time to break down what is it to expect. Like, what are you going to expect from this competition the day before, etc.? So the day before, expect to be nervous slash excited. The ratio of that depends on the kind of person you are. I tend to get very nervous and also a little bit excited. Um, you may have doubts about your performance, but you also might just feel so ready and pumped, you know? That's the range of emotion. It's totally fine. And just like the first one, it doesn't matter where you sit on there. Just know you're going to experience a combination of these two emotions. And then if it's your first comp, I hope to God you're not water cutting. Like, why would you water cut? You don't even know if you like this sport and you're risking a water cut for like what to qualify for states or just to like hit like a crappy PR it's like don't water cut it's your first comp just show up 
make sure you're like within weight if you're not in weight then why the hell did you choose that weight class mister it's like yeah just don't work hard it's your first comp I've done pre extensive water cuts you don't want that stress for your first comp like the really the point of this competition is just to see if you like competing if you like the sport so why would you try and be competitive it's like what you, you're not going to be even if you set like national qualifying totals you won't be competitive at a at a, at a state qualifier like seriously like you might come first out of like default because nobody else is in your weight class and age class so just keep that in mind okay so what to do the first day like the day before well if you got to drive a fair distance consider driving today like the day before competition and book a hotel because like some comps can literally be hours away um you know like i and you don't want to risk traffic as well like i competed once and it was like a like a two and a half hour drive the day before so like i would have had to get up at like 3 a.m with a water cut to drive and potentially miss and potentially get stuck in traffic or something like that like you just don't want that if it's a long time away because weigh-ins are like 7 a.m usually just book a hotel if it's like a 30 minute drive phew, who cares like just get there early but if it's something like you you know like it's if it's fair distance consider booking a hotel so eat into comp lots of salt lots of carbs good food you know de-stress you know and this will help you know, like just enjoy good food with good company relax and just fill yourself up with carbs and salt and just be ready and feel strong like but don't try any like wacky foods like high msg thai maybe that's a bad idea for me that just gives me like bl heaps of bloating and heaps of just like explosive farts so you might want to be careful um you know like if you know you don't shit your pants if you have like steak and chips then just have steak and chips but if you might shit your pants having mexican don't have mexican that's all i gotta say about that you know like also keep like relax and try to keep your time free like if you're like a workaholic like me don't plan to work the night before competition just take that as your quote-unquote holiday and relax with friends and family play video games like just stay out playing minecraft like who cares um it's just about basically removing any potential extra stresses so because you just don't need it and why not relax before a comp like you're spending a weekend to compete this is your first competition you might as well set yourself up for the most success and doing that is often just relaxing so also double check your bag for all your equipment you don't want to leave for the drive get to the hotel and be like fuck i forgot my soft suit that is like game over it's like or, or you woke up at 3 a.m to drive to comp and then like you just make weigh-ins to find out you have no soft suit so like, well, you're going to drive back. It's like, at least if you check the day before and you put everything in your bag and you triple check, you know that if you get so if you get to the hotel, it's just like, there's a chance you might be able to drive there and back, which is also why you should keep your time free. But just make sure you have everything ready. So the night before, you might get zero sleep. I have never gotten a good night's sleep before a competition just never have um like you you'll likely just be rolling around in bed all night just thinking about comp it's um it sucks the night before a competition the amount of sleep you get but that's the game you play because you're just so nervous and excited and you're just like ready and like i've broken records on no sleep before like one night of bad sleep it's not gonna be in the world especially if you're excited and ready so don't have expectations that you're going to be sleeping like a baby uh, without the help of um, drugs, honestly. Like, you know, if you're sleeping in a hotel, it's going to be a different environment, everything like that. Just don't judge yourself and don't give yourself pressure to sleep well. Just lay in bed and just daydream and just go, whatever happens, happens. If I get zero hours of sleep, that's okay. If I get eight hours of sleep, that's good that's cool but it doesn't matter because it's the night before comp and if you're like i'm gonna maximize all my performance i'm gonna get seven and a half hours of sleep and i'm gonna wake up this time and that, 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 that. it's like it's not gonna happen and often you putting pressure on yourself to do that will make you sleep less so don't have any remove the association between sleep and performance 
because comp time it's completely different atmosphere you're excited you got lots of energy because of caffeine and the crowd and you don't realize you're tired on comp day you realize you're tired after comp day and so potentially for me at least the night before there's no correlation when you're training and like you've got like a normal life schedule and your other stresses poor sleep can compound obviously but the night before comp doesn't really matter like don't even worry about it so what do you do um well beforehand you might want to consider changing your sleep cycle so if you're going to have to wake up at 5 a.m for comp maybe start going to bed at nine o'clock and so you wake up at five just shift your shift your schedule for like a week and that way it's easier because like if you wake up at 4 a.m because you can't sleep you know that's less of a burden than if you're usually waking up at eight so it's more in line with your circadian rhythm now and so the impact on waking up won't be as bad that's a little strategy you can use keep that in mind and look it's it's your first comp you've got nothing to prove and it's just going to be a fun day of lifting anyway like and you know this is to see if you want to keep lifting and keep no obviously you want to keep lifting but keep power lifting so just that's my advice when it comes to sleeping in the night before okay the wake up for weigh-ins you're going to feel like a strange combination of like tired and energetic like as soon as you wake up on your alarm you'll be like rubbing your eyes and be like oh my god I feel like ready to go but I'm still like I've just woken up it's a weird combination and you're probably more nervous than excited uh, than usual or those those emotions of nervous and excited are as the biggest they've been because you're just like ready your pumps like you can feel it it's a good feeling but it's also not because like you just want to fucking compete so what do you do in the morning well you weigh yourself see how close you are to like your weight class because this is important um, now is when you've got to like think about your weight so if you're like 300 grams under the weight class don't eat or drink anything you can have like a couple sips of some water or Gatorade but generally body weight scales are accurate to plus or minus 300 grams so you could either be dead on or 600 grams under just don't risk it if you're like 500 grams under like have something small and make sure the total weight of your food and drink doesn't exceed like 300 grams or 200 depends on how risky you want to take it but have like a like that's quite literally 500 grams under 300 gram meal is like a glass of water and then like some almonds you know like it's not much food or you could just have like food and then have a little bit of water you know but just make sure the total weight is a little bit under and you will lose water weight as you get to comp and as you dress and all that kind of stuff but it's just making sure it's just like you know you might as well because if you're pushing it that close you just got to be careful you know so look if you're like a, a, a kilo or more under just have like a juicy salty breakfast that you know is going to like digest well and don't even think about it just enjoy and fucking smash it so then after that grab all your bags you know check you've got your equipment like just double check everything like triple check at this point and then get ready to leave so dress everything like that you're good it's pre weigh-ins so this is like when you first walk into the meet um, and you need to do a couple things so you need to check a rack heights if you're bench and squat so they'll have set up the actual competition rack that they will be using and every lifter is required to use that rack adjust the heights of the rack to see what's ideal they don't set it for you so you might go up there and you go oh like usually in training i'm like a 17 but because this is like an alico one it's different and so you might actually be a 20 on like rack height and then you figure out all these numbers so that you know that you're secure um and that's really it like if you're unsure of what to do go ask somebody or I hope your coach is there. If you're self-coached, then ask somebody. But ideally, have your coach there. He'll run you through it if he's got good experience. And then, after that you've checked your rack heights, you've got to go get your equipment checked by the official. So there's like a weigh-in place, equipment check, and then rack height stuff. So once you check your equipment, they'll approve it all, make sure it's allowed to be used in the uh, federation. 
and you'll have the numbers for your rack heights and then get ready for weigh-ins so um, if you're underage as well and you're in a drug tested federation make sure like your guardian or like your parent is able to sign the in brackets like I accept pissing in a cup for drugs uh, testing form so if you're in a tested federation under the age of 18 or over the age of 18 you, you need a form signed which basically says hey um, you know in the event that you think I'm really strong I will give permission to urinate in a cup with my pants down so that's just what you got to do um, but yeah so you can either have that pre-signed if it's like on the website or have it signed on the spot so just keep that in mind that's something else you got to do I didn't really talk about weigh-ins how do weigh-ins actually work so everybody competing in that session gets like put on a list doesn't matter weight class age and then they randomly organize a list so it's randomly assigned for testing purposes and so you could weigh in like you don't know when you're gonna weigh in before you get to the comp you can either weigh in first or you can weigh in last it's all chance and you kind of want luck to serve you by weighing in first because that way you can just get into your equipment and start warming up and if you did a water cut it means you can start hydrating as quickly as possible because being last and then you've got to have like 30 minutes to hydrate and it's just not fun um, your name will be called in this from the list it'll go from top to bottom you go into a room you'll strip down to your underwear uh, and then you'll stand on the scale They'll conf that's when you confirm the details such as your rack heights and then your openers so this is your first lifts of the day and then you'll receive what's called your lifting cards what are lifting cards? oh my god so much information it's okay I'm giving you a lot right now but it will build a foundation for when you go to comp so lifting card is basically a piece of paper which you put your t attempts on so your opener which is your first lift and then your second attempt and your third attempt you write them down um, on the piece of paper with your name and that's that's all that is and so you have 10 of them uh, usually three for squat three for bench four for deadlift because you can change your third attempt um, and so you'll you, you give them your openers and then you know after you finish your opener in the actual competition you have like a minute to give them the second attempt so usually you just let your coach slash like your handler deal with that like they just do it for you you talk to them about the attempt they put it up boom sorted um, cool so you've weighed yourself everything's good you made weight congratulations thank you for not doing a water cut or if you did you're a fucking idiot um, post weigh-ins what do you do you are pumped like you are just ready to go but you're also nervous as shit that's pretty normal man and things can feel probably feel really chaotic at the moment so stay hydrated just eat a little bit of food and then get dressed into like your comp equipment you know so what will happen is then your flights will get posted which means you get to see whereabouts you are like when you're doing a first attempt so you know like even so it, typically it's organized in flights and so what that looks like is let's say like 10 lifters are in the first flight 10 lifters are in the second flight and so fl the first flight they go through all their openers second and third attempts then while that's happening flight two generally warms up and then flight once flight one finishes flight two then does their openers and then there's a break between and then they go again so you'll know about where you are in the flight so if your first flight as soon as they call bars loaded you're the first one to walk out if you're fifth you got to wait till five people like four people above you go um, but roughly each lift is a minute before you so if you're like number 10 down when they first call bar is loaded you've got another 10 minutes till you go on so keep that in mind and so yep um, I actually had a slide where I was going to explain flights but it looks like I already did it awesome so getting ready for your flight so if you take like 40 minutes to warm up like to what your opener weight will be then start warming up then take your time and let your coach guide you like you guys hopefully would have had a discussion about expectations and your warming up strategy beforehand like I, what I like to do with my athletes is we literally write every single warm up beforehand and roughly their approximate times it's not like a bible but what it does is it completely removes any doubt 
because it's fine it's like oh i'm feeling really weak today it's like well i'm feeling really strong today it's like that's okay just focus on this number and if we can change openers we will just let's see how the warm-ups go and so i i write it all down and that that's very transparent with my clients where it's like we've got it planned and you know exactly what's going to happen i know exactly what's going to happen it just takes guesswork out of it if you take caffeine take it now but keep in mind you probably want to take more before deadlifts because deadlifts get super hyped and it's like midway through the day so you won't have peak caffeine concentration in your body so as i said have your warm-ups planned up in advance and then eventually what will happen as you're warming up the meat will start and the lifters will just begin doing their first attempts so that first pre-opener that feeling right before you're about to go hit your opener it's like your heart is just racing you're not sure how you feel your name gets called you know followed by bars loaded right you walk out and then it's like time to do your first squat that feeling oh so nerve-wracking and so much build-up it's oh, I, it's like nostalgic thinking about it sorry i'm just getting a bit excited hopefully your openers are conservative so it's something you could hit on a bad day um you don't know how you're going to respond to the environment this is your first competition you may feel like super strong on comp day or like really weak doesn't matter what type of person you are you just need to learn what that is so control what you can control and that's how you approach the bar so you walk up to your attempt take your time setting up your back you walk out with focus and you listen to the commands you don't show up with heaps of hype and heaps of ammonia you just come up with focus and alertness but a sense of control you decide how long it takes to walk out you set up your back position you have an entire minute doesn't sound like much but it takes like typically 10 seconds to do that in the gym you can take three times as long if you wanted to it does not matter so you walk out listen to the calls and then you know so that's they'll put the hand, they'll put the hand up and be like squat it will come up you wait and they say rack and then you walk forward and you rack it after you finish that lift like all your nerves just like disappear and you're basically just ready to enjoy the day you go oh hang on that wasn't that bad or you go holy shit hmm there you go like that wasn't why was i so nervous <laughs> it's like well it's your first time obviously but now you're basically just set up to have like such a fun day it's very very exciting attempt selection so like how do you attempt your selections well try and play it conservative from there onwards there's no need to do like really risky prs like it's your, like it's your first meet like come on and it, you, it's probably better to walk away knowing you have more to give because as you get more competitive that's when you can push things there's no point pushing things in this first meet just go nine for nine and develop competency in the sport like that's my advice you know and then let that kind of philosophy of like giving more for the next meet guide your attempt selection through bench and deadlift as well i'd rather you hit an rp nine and a half pr than an rp 10 grinder where like you just got like two whites you know that's for your first comp see keep in mind i've never actually I've never gotten a single red light in my entire competition that's pretty cool so after your first flight nice man you've just finished all your openers on your squat second attempt third attempt it's now time to start thinking about bench and you've got roughly 35 to 55 minutes from now until you open up so that looks like 10 15 minutes to eat relax and listen to some calm music and then another 35 minutes or like 30 to 35 minutes to warm up again eat something small i don't give a shit if you're not hungry it's very important because what happens is you get really excited really excited and then like you feel like you don't need to eat but you kind of did need to eat because you haven't eaten in like eight hours now and then you just get like super bad stomach cramps and all this kind of stuff so have something small something that's easy something's quick and then you'll make sure you survive so you can crash very easily if you don't eat especially because the whole day is just so much action so much hype so that's it like that's repeat that process um until deadlifts 
first, second, third attempts. And that's your first meet. Like, congratulations. You've just competed in your first meet. You kind of want to hang around at the end. Because maybe you won. And you might get a medal. And uh, you get to send a little podium back. Yay, I won my meet. And then you probably qualify for states. And then you're off to states. If you want to keep pursuing this. That's it. Like, congratulations. That's probably what to expect. If I missed anything from any veterans, let me know. I don't think I did. I think I covered it all pretty well. And if you have questions, because you, you probably will, um, message me on Instagram. You can message me on at deadlift.squat.bench or you can just go to at fitbigstrong on Instagram. I'll happily answer your questions there. If the if you're really boomer, you can go to fitbigstrong.com and then shoot us a message for the customer support. But like, just message me on Instagram, man. No harm. That's really it. That's all i got to say. So thank you guys for listening to episode 9 of the Fit Big Strong podcast. Um, make sure you give us a like, a review on whatever platform you're listening to. If it's, if it's YouTube, subscribe. If it's like Apple Podcasts or iTunes or the same thing, or like Spotify, give us a follow, give us a rate. Uh, really, really appreciate it because we're trying to... The more you do that, the more we can provide free, valuable content to... Uh, to the world and that's really my mission statement is make the place the world a better place through fitness and health so i've been ashton from fitbigstrong.com and i'm signing out now see us